My guest today is the host and managing editor of Washington Watch with Roland Martin. TV One's hour-long weekly public affairs series, which focuses on issues of importance in the African-American community. He is also a CNN contributor and senior analyst for the Tom Joyner Morning Show. And he's here today to discuss justice for Trayvon Martin. Help me welcome Roland S. Martin to the show. Hello, Roland, and welcome to the show. Doing great. Glad to be here. Good. Thank you so much. Now, I know you're heavily involved with the Trayvon Martin case down in Florida. Can you tell me why is this case so important to you? Well, I think what jumps out is is the whole issue of justice. I mean, how can someone sit here uh, and be walking someone sit here and they're carrying a concealed weapon and here's this young man walking back from the store uh, and you know, he's labeled suspicious. Uh, no one can say why he was suspicious. Uh, and then all of a sudden he's dead. Uh, and then for, the, for him not to be uh, picked up, that makes no sense at all. Right. None whatsoever until someone has to speak to the issue of justice. Right. Because on Monday you moderated a panel in Eatonville, Florida, regarding the Trayvon Martin case. And can you tell us the mood of this particular rally? Well, it was, first of all, it was a, a community forum, an uh, opportunity to present details of the case, but also to talk about the standing ground law. We had some 800 people who were in attendance there, uh, and um, they, they, they were really thankful to be able uh, to uh, hear the information, to get the information, uh, to understand what's going on. Uh, and so it was, it was and so literally, we walked through what the standing ground law the um, the the whole deal of you know de- defense and justifiable homicide and, and so showed since 2005 how uh, the um, how how the the number of justifiable homicides has increased dramatically in Florida and so I think it was a great information gathering situation because yeah because I heard that they did increase and also that gang members are now using the stand your ground law as a way to actually go after people and say they were standing their ground because one gang member carries a gun another one does too but they say they're standing their ground and so the homicides have gone up now I noticed that in the news now they're trying to demonize Trayvon Martin by trying to bring up some things that happened at school he was suspended for 10 days trying to build a case of why George Zimmerman probably pulled the trigger but to me it still doesn't make any sense so What's going on now in Florida with them trying to bring up this new information and, and these other allegations well, against I mean, him? I mean, it is very clear that they want to muddy the picture as to who he was. But here's the most important thing. There's nothing they can say about Trayvon Martin right now that speaks to what took place on that night. What a prosecutor, what a grand jury, what a jury will look at is what took place on the night of February 26th. Mm-hmm. That is it that you won't even be able to enter into uh, evidence that he was suspended from school. You will not. George Zimmerman is going to have to explain why did he determine that Trayvon Martin was suspicious. Why did he follow him? Why did he pursue him? Mm -hmm. He is going to have to figure out, he's going to have to own up to those things, and that is what speaks the most about all of this, pure and simple. And lastly, I know that you wore a hoodie on your show, and you also have a hoodie on, a hoodie on your Twitter page. And also the Miami, Miami Heat also wore a hoodie as well. What do you hope the public symbol of the hoodie will mean to this case moving forward? Well, I think first and foremost, we have to own up to that the hoodie is a pure symbol. Uh, that is not the issue. That is not what is driving this. Uh, and so it, it's important that we, that, that, that we see that. Uh, it's important that we understand that people are making judgments of black men and don't even know them. Mm-hmm. They are making judgments about who this young man was, and they've never met him. Uh, they make judgments about us all the time. And so, if I'm and so, I wore my Texas A&M hoodie, the black one, because I've got a maroon one, I've got a gray one, because if I'm walking down the street in my sweatsuit and the matching pants and the matching shirt and that hoodie, and it's cold, I'm sorry. Are you telling me that? Somehow, me being a college graduate, me sitting here, uh, being accomplished in all that I've done, and all that stuff is irrelevant, you have reduced me to a stereotype. That, to me, is why I think it was important that, uh, that, that we make that point. And I'm glad you did that. Before we go, I'm glad you did that, because yesterday was the first time that it has ever 
it came to my mind. My husband came home because we also own a janitorial business, but we're also pastors of a church. And my husband wears this hoodie when he goes to work. And this was the first time it ever came to my mind was to be careful. My husband wears this hoodie every single day. I wear my black one when I come mm-hmm. to work and I have it on now. My husband who pastors a church, college educated, we own businesses. But yet I had to tell him to be careful for the first time ever when he wore his hoodie like he does every time he goes out to work. So I want to just commend you on that. Thank you so much for taking a stand. We want to let everybody know. Make sure you watch Washington Watch with Roland Martin on Sundays at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and Eastern Standard Time on TV One. Thank you so much for joining me on the show today. All right. I certainly appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Okay. Mm Bye-bye. Bye-bye.